the mysterious Himalayas, spanning the entire distance between India and Tibet. Somewhere up in this vast, desolate section of our world live a strange species whose existence has baffled science for centuries. In recent years, many anthropologists have pondered the new reports of these creatures. The question is always the same. Are they man or beast? I'd rather find Erickson. I didn't see his outfit. I hope we're not late. If he's left, we'll have to follow him. Well, that's easily said, Connie. We've come this far, we'll keep going. Speak English. Lada. We're looking for Dr. Erickson. Is he here? Gone. When? Tomorrow. You mean yesterday. Do you know where? Mountain. Hello. What are you doing up here? I'm just too tired to go into it. I'm Trevor Hudson. This is Connie Hayward. Steve Cameron. Hayward? I met a man named Hayward. Dr. James Hayward here a few weeks back. My brother. And the reason we're here. Oh, he left ten days ago to set up camp for the Erickson expedition. And Professor Erickson? Erickson left yesterday morning. Then we'll have to follow him. You mean you don't know the purpose of Dr. Erickson's expedition? Well, only that he's been preparing it for years. Well, his purpose is to capture one of the abominable snowmen. That's what the natives call the Yeti. A kind of people covered with hair, supposedly living above the 21,000 foot level. Covered with hair? What do you mean? A kind of people? Nobody seems to know whether they're man or beast. Everyone thought they were a fable until some famous explorers found traces of them just before World War I. Since then, many people have claimed to have seen them. Did you know about this? Well, I knew Dr. Erickson was hunting snowmen, but I thought they were fossil relics of the Ice Age. Do you believe these stories? Well, Erickson's a famous anthropologist. Are these Yeti dangerous? I've seen four expeditions go up in search of the Yeti, and each has lost at least one man. Well, that settles it, Connie. I'm not letting you endanger your life by going any farther. You can't go beyond this point anyway. You won't be able to get guides. You'll never make it alone. Why can't we get guides? They won't go out on anything connected with the Yeti hunt. Unless a certain guide named Varga leads them. And Erickson's got him. Mr. Cameron, do you know where Erickson's camp will be? I have a rough idea. Would you lead us up? You know what you're asking? Mr. Cameron, I'm willing to pay any price for your assistance. It's urgent that I get to my brother. We can get lost out there and they'd never find us. I'll have to risk that. You're a very determined person, Miss Hayward. Yes, Mr. Cameron. Determined to save my brother's life. Well, we'd have to leave right away if we expect to catch Erickson before he reaches deep snow. You'll go. I know you two would never make it alone. 
Thank you, Mr. Cameron. I'm very grateful. Make another couple of miles before nightfall. Let's camp here and push ourselves tomorrow. I'll never catch up with Erickson sitting here. I can't go another step. We stay with party. She says stay. We stay. We'll go on. Callie, this is stupid. You're killing yourself. We'll keep going. Okay, we may see them tomorrow. You've been saying that for two days. I wasn't saying it to hear myself talk. I don't enjoy this pushing any more than you do. But it's your only hope to overtake Erickson. Don't blame Steve, Hud. I'm the one who's doing the pushing. We'll stay with our schedule, daylight to dusk. You might as well take it gracefully. If this isn't the weirdest nonsense. Somebody thinks he saw a Yeti 40 years ago. This gives Erickson the idea to capture one. And I find myself stuck up in the wilds of the Himalayas just because your brother has. Hud! I'm sorry. But you've got to admit it doesn't make much sense. What do you want us to do? Turn back? Look, Hud. I didn't ask you to come on this trip. You volunteered. If you want to turn back, go ahead.
may be getting a touch of the altitude. It affects some people. He has a touch of feeling sorry for himself. I guess you never really know people unless you go through something like this. He'll come around. You better get some rest. As tired as I've been, I can't sleep. <laughs> Guilty conscience? My brother, Jim. Ever since you mentioned these snowmen, I've been all the more worried. What's your theory about them? I don't have any. All I know is what I've read and heard from the natives. Has anyone ever had a good look at them? I talked to a man once who was supposed to have seen one through his glasses. He claimed they walked upright like a man. How can anyone live in that cold? I can't answer that. Nothing grows up there. Too high for animal life. Your guess is as good as anybody's. Dr. Erickson really thinks he'll contact her? He certainly hopes to. I had a long talk with him one night. Do you really think we'll catch up with him tomorrow? Oh, I figured we'd picked up a day on them. What good will it do? Even if you see them, we can't hail them to stop. We better find them soon. We've made this trip up here for nothing. Why? Because all this snow moving six different directions. How could I have got mixed up in this thing? Because you wanted to help me. Or so you said. <sighs> I got him. Where? How far? Straight over there. Is there any way to signal them? They may hear this. Did they hear it? They haven't turned. a shot. Who can it be? No one hunts this high. They're trying to find us with glasses. Look. They're trying to signal us. There's a woman. Now, who can they be? certainly want us. We'll wait for them. Are they for us? They're waiting. Thank God. Come on. Let's move. Cameron, what are you doing up here? Miss Hayward? How do you How do? do, you do doctor? And Mr. Hudson, doctor. How do you do? A pleasure, doctor. Miss Hayward will do all the explaining. Hayward? Are you related to Jim? My brother. You've come way up here to see him? I have to. But I didn't quite plan it like this. We expected to find you in Carpo. We missed you there, missed you at the outpost, and here we are. Well, we'll both see him soon. We're not very far from camp. Lucky we heard that shot. We'll be in the snow in a few hours. You never could have caught us. Hey, on. Make coffee. We might as well camp right here. Here, let me help you with your things. Thank you. So when I heard that new tracks had been sighted, and there were fresh rumors about the Yeti, I decided to see for myself. You really believe it? It's hard not to when so many Famous men stake their reputations on the fact. Are they really covered with fur? <clears throat> Not fur. Hair. Fur has no root, but hair does. 
We've definitely established that the Yeti are covered with a hair quite similar to our own. Here's the general conception of most scientists. More beast than man. It may be to your eyes, but I believe it's human. You really want to capture that? I think that I'd die happy if I could study them. They may be the missing link. If they are, we've solved a thousand mysteries about you and me. I'd hate to tangle with one on a dark night. Oh, I don't think you have to worry about that. I wish I hadn't seen that sketch. I don't think I'll ever sleep oh, again. Oh, nonsense. They're probably just simple people. People. Just hope I don't dream tonight. <laughs> well, I guess we'd all better turn in. You can have it. If we're lucky and capture one, this trip could make you famous. You can have the fame. I'll take some hot coffee. Magnificent country. It seems to fascinate you as much as it does me. I'm not going up there. I didn't think I'd make that last hill. It was easy for you. A night's nice rest and... No. It's not the climbing, it, it's the Yeti. I have a feeling... Come oh. on, Hudson, we need a drink. Something wrong. I felt it all day. Nonsense, Connie. I can understand hug cracking, but he's watching us right now. Did you see that? He knows we're talking about him. I'll speak to Erickson when I get a chance. Have you seen much of him before? It's one of the guys that works for Varga. And what about this Varga? Can he be trusted? Everyone hires him. And something always happens. Someone always gets killed. I'll see what I can find out. Not a word of this to the others. I'll keep my eye on the guy tomorrow as we go up.
country. The more I'm convinced, the Yeti are a myth. Look, what could live in a place like that? That's part of the mystery. What about you? Ever see a Yeti? No, see. Ever meet anybody who did? See Yeti. Die. Let's move off. to set up tents. Let's have a look. Happened today. How do you figure it, Doc? I'm baffled. Everything's ripped apart. We'll be getting dark pretty soon. We're going to be stuck. We may as well be stuck comfortably. Better give me a hand setting up camp. Guides took off during the night, left us up here. What? They deserted. Now we're isolated up here with no one to lead us back. Where's Dean? Oh, he and Erickson went out this morning to see if they could find any sign of Jim and Varga. This whole trip was a blunder. If you felt that way, why did you come with me? Because I thought I could talk some sense into you. Oh, look, Hud. This trip has proved we'll never get along. It's been one continual argument ever since we left home. We don't see a mark, track, something. How do you figure it, Doc? I've been afraid to mention it. You believe the Eddie got Jim and Varga? Is there any other explanation? I just can't believe it. We'd better get back. What do we tell Connie? Just keep the Yeti out of it. No use worrying her. Good to see oh, you. Oh. Mr. Cameron, we meet again. I'm glad you two appeared. Miss Hayward and Mr. Hudson have been quite concerned. Do you know where Jim is? He doesn't. He's as puzzled as we are. Weren't you taken... Didn't you leave the camp together? He left alone. There had been quite a snowfall that night. And I thought I might find some fresh tracks. 
When I returned that afternoon, I found the camp as you had. I have been looking ever since. You must have left tracks in the heavy snow. I tracked him around to the lee side of the West Bluff. But beyond that point, the wind had obliterated everything. Mr. Varga hasn't given up hope. He says there's a good chance Jim might have holed up somewhere. He was anxious to leave. Too anxious, I thought. Maybe he stumbled onto something and just kept going. Knowing we'd look for him. Yes, we surely will. May I have a word with you alone, Varga? If Miss Hayward will excuse me? Of course. We'll make a thorough search for him in the morning. God willing, we'll find him. Did you find anything, Steve? Nothing. Do you think there's any hope? Connie, I don't know. Well, I'm not going to give up. If Jim's out there, I'm going to find him. Dead or alive. Come in. Come in, Varda. Can I offer you a drink? Never touch a drop. Is that so? Always thought you climbers liked your nip. You can't mix mountains and whiskey. What about Jim, Varga? I wish I knew. Any ideas? You're referring, of course, to the Yeti. How else can you explain his complete disappearance? As I've told you down below, I think I've made this trip up here more times than any man alive. I've yet to see Yeti or Trex. Then how do you explain these rumors? I don't even try. Every new rumor means more expeditions will make the trip up here. Expeditions are my business. As you know, I've specialized in the evolution of man for over 30 years. I've heard you quoted a thousand times. You deal in theory, I deal in fact. I can't believe that such men as Dubois, Wagner, Hale, Bishop could be completely wrong. One of them, yes. But four distinguished scientists, each at a different time, different place, have seen the same evidence. Well, tomorrow I shall see for myself. Any plans as to where we can start? I suggest that ridge that runs north and south. I tried to take other parties over there, but they didn't like the climb. You lead, I'll follow. Well, see you tomorrow then. Good night, Doctor. Good night. be well for us to split up here. The doctor and I will take this side. You three follow that ridge as far as you can. If you see anything, fire a shot. We'll do the same. Good luck, Miss Hayward. If you do fire a shot, Mr. Cameron, make sure you're in the clear. It could cause a slide. Good luck. There's something about that guy. I've been wanting to say that ever since I met him. He's tried to be helpful. What could he do? I don't know, Connie, but come on, this isn't finding Jim. Let's go.
better get back. Connie, I hate to quit. But this seems hopeless. Steve, I told you. It was urgent that I find Jim. But I didn't explain why. He took some experimental injections back in the States. After he left, the doctor told me that if he didn't return from this high altitude at once, he would die. Didn't he know that? No, it's a continuous experiment. This altitude factor was revealed only after Jim had already left. Connie. Connie, we've got to go back and organize a regular rescue party or we'll never get to Jim. And what's that supposed to mean? It means that I don't trust Varga. I know what you're thinking. But I'm afraid. Maybe I am. But you yourself said that at least one person has been lost in every expedition he has led. And how do you account for the two guides disappearing? I've wondered about that myself. You'll notice Varga hasn't mentioned them. You're jumpy, Hud. All day I've had the feeling someone was watching us. Trailing us. We'll take the same route back. If somebody's watching us, maybe we'll see them. Come on. From this spot, you can see every locale where the Yeti are supposed to have been seen. That peak was where Dubois first found tracks. Over there, Wagner photographed what he claims are Yeti tracks. And right down there, the spot where Bishop claims he first saw a Yeti last year. Weren't you with Bishop? I led the trip. I wasn't with him at the time. Bishop was a friend of mine for 20 years. I don't think he makes such a statement without some good reason. By the way, how was he killed? We never knew. A few days later, he disappeared, much as Jim has. We searched for days. We lost a great man. I lost a great friend. Did you ever check his discovery spot for tracks? We didn't have much chance. There was four feet of snow that night. Can we pass that spot on the way? If we hurry. I don't want to keep the others waiting. Miss Hayward is concerned enough as it is. I want you to know, Varga, I appreciate your concern for Miss Hayward. I envy Steve. They'll make a fine couple. Steve? I thought it was hot. You're not as observing as I am, Doctor. Take it easy, Connie. Here they come now. Dr. Erickson, did you find any trace of Jim? No, oh, Connie. I'm afraid we didn't. I'm sorry. Neither did we. Where's Hud? Hud? He left us on the climb back to join you. We didn't see him. Something must have happened. We better get out there right away and look for him. I'll break out the flares. It might be dark before we find him. Ah! Dr. Erickson, Steve, oh! there he is. Yes, Connie. I'm all right. What happened, Hut? I was climbing over an outcropping on my way to join you, Doctor. But I saw some tracks in the snow. Tracks? I followed them for quite a while till they led me to a large fault in the glacier. I decided not to go any further alone. This is what I've been searching for. Can you lead us back there, Hut? Now? Yes. It'll soon be dark. That's all right. We brought flares. Let's get started. Thirty years I've waited for this.
got to get out of here. Erickson won't leave. He's so steamed up about his discovery, he's floating. Then we'll go alone. We can't desert him. Barker will stay with him. That's what I'm afraid of. You know, I, I'm beginning to think Hud was right about a lot of things. Poor Hud. Oh, oh. We'd only listen to him. His head. You're lucky to be alive after last night. If I live to be a thousand, I'll never forget it. Uh, I know what you mean. I'm going over to see Doc. Talk to him about Varga. Is Varga there now? I don't know, but if he is, I'll try to pin him down. Don't ever let him think you suspect. Look, Connie. I'm only concerned about one thing. Getting us out of this place alive. I'll be real cozy with Varga. Come on. That's it. They wrote the shot, man. I've got to talk to you, Doc. Therefore, I drew the... Doc, snap out of it. That's it. Leave me alone. Don't interrupt me. Listen, Doc, what I got to tell you concerns that. Steve, don't interrupt me. I'll be hours getting down what I saw last night. I... You want to get that back to the States? Don't ask me such questions. Of course I do. Then put it down and listen to me. And listen closely. And none of us will get out of here alive. What? Where's Varga? Out there somewhere? Watch the flat. If he comes, let me know. What's the matter, Steve? You act as if you'd lost your mind. I almost lost my life last night. I don't want to go the way Hud did. And Jim. You've learned something about Jim? I learned our chances to get out aren't worth a nickel. Varga says they'll never attack. They're frightened of guns. You saw the way they panicked? Doc, did you see where that club came from? I didn't even know you were hit till Varga picked you up. I know there were no Yeti on that side of me. But Varga was. Varga? Why, he saved your life. And for what reason, I haven't figured. You should thank God we have Varga. He got us out of there at the risk of his own life. You, you should have seen the way he intimidated them. Literally chased them. Doc. He's coming. Not a word about this. I'm going to play this straight, and you play along. You're looking much better, Mr. Cameron. Doc tells me I owe you my life. I don't know how much it's worth. But I'll try to get even someday. It was nothing. I'm sure you would have done the same if our positions had been reversed. How are you, Miss Hayward? I trust no ill effects from that harrowing experience. I wouldn't like to go through it again. Well, Doctor, it seems Miss Hayward and Mr. Cameron don't share our enthusiasm. So I suppose we'd better start making plans for the trip back. But before we go, would you like to visit the cave? I'd like to spend a whole day there. I have a dozen questions I'd like answered. Whenever you're ready. Mind if I go, Varga? Of course not. The more the merrier. I'd like a day to get over this head. It's the biggest hangover I ever had. Let's make it tomorrow, then. Tomorrow it is. Good. I can take a day to finish up my notes. <clears throat> I'll be back in a moment. I'm going to take another look outside. Keep a lookout. Doc, listen to me. You're not beginning all over again. Doc, this man is a phony. Who or what he is, I don't know. But he's playing us two ways from the middle. How can you talk such nonsense? What are you implying? Because he knew about that cave. Steve, I'm becoming a little impatient with you. Varga saved your life. You should be grateful for that, at least. I want no more of your fanciful illusions. Now, if you don't mind, I'll get back to my work. Okay, Doc. Have it your way. Come on, honey. Steve, what's the matter with him? Why won't he listen? I'm beginning to think there's something wrong with all of us for coming up here. Are you really going back to that cave? You bet I am. Now, this time I'll go prepared. But what about me? Come along. Steve, I couldn't. I just couldn't go in that cave again. 
I can't let Erickson go alone. I'm beginning to think Vargas trying to pick us off one at a time. First it was Jim, then Hunt. He figures to get Erickson alone, then he'll come back for us. Steve, let's get out of here. Let's go right now. Please, Steve, please, let's go. Honey, we'd never make it down off that mountain alone. I don't know what Vargas is up to, but I'm going to find out. But I can't stay here alone. I can't. You're not going to stay here in the tent. That would make it too easy for her. I think I could talk some sense into Erickson when we're inside the cave. Now, remember the last place we stopped to rest just before we got here? That's where you're going as soon as I pull out with Dr. Vargas. Stay there until I come. But supposing you don't? I'll come back for you. Now, take all the food you can carry. Steve, if he comes first, I'll jump. You know, I think you would. Steve! Hello, Steve! Coming, Doc! Try this. See if it's too heavy. I can handle it. Right. Hide it. As soon as we're out of sight, start back down. Honey, don't lose it if we don't need all the way down. I'll see what Doc wants. Oh, good morning, Steve. Good morning, Margaret. How are things up in the hill? I kept watch all night. Out of sight of them. Yeah, I guess we've seen the last of them. Oh, uh, Doc's been up all night with his notes. Maybe he'd like a rest before we start. Speak for yourself, Steve. I'll be right with you. Is Miss Hayward coming with us? Oh, she wanted to, but I talked her out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. She's had enough trouble as it is. By the way, I did find this. Thanks. I just hope I don't have to use it. I'll be ready. I don't know how you do it, Varga. These climbs never seem to bother you. I've spent most of my life climbing. It comes as naturally to me as sitting at a desk does to you. It seems unreasonable to be warm in temperature like this. I can remember really being warm in Calcutta. That heat was just too much for me. What does the Himalayan guard do in Calcutta? Good question. My father was stationed there, so I started my early schooling. It didn't work out, so he shipped me to Sweden, where the temperature was more to my liking. Didn't the heat affect your father? Not as it did me. Apparently, I take after my mother. She was a mountain woman with Mongol blood. I never knew her. She died at my birth. Are you married, Varga? Never had the time for it. Too bad. Good blood strain like yours should be perpetuated. It makes for strong men, and women, too. Well, the right woman will come along. I'll name my first son Eric. Eric Varga. Sounds good, doesn't it? I'll hold you to that promise. Shall we move on? There was the light snow we had last night. Could move easily. We'd better spread out, just in case. <sighs>
we've got to get to Steve. Useless doctor. No man could live underneath that avalanche. I'm going to take a look. You're coming with me. Parker, you'll do as I order. This is my expedition. Was your expedition, doctor. You'll take orders from me now. Buddy, you're forgetting your position. Don't ever talk to me like that again. Don't even think it. I'll start up that hill. You're mad, Varga. You'll soon see how mad. Now start up that hill. Thinking of escape, Doctor. I wouldn't. Sit down, Doctor. Our civilization hasn't quite caught up with yours. Right there. Is that the pronoun our you used? It was. Your part, Yeti. was right. He suspected this. You suspect no more. That avalanche was time to take care of him. I'll kill anyone who insists on these expeditions. My people will. Most of them are not developed intellectually, it's true. They frighten at the sound of a shot. But they'll get over that. The only reason they wouldn't kill one of you on sight would be because I told them not to. You're mad. No, Doctor. Every move I've made, I've planned meticulously. I can make you the most famous man alive. <laughs> Put me on exhibition. No, thank you, Doctor. I have other plans for me. And for you. What possible plans could you have for me? I plan to kill you. Kill me. What good will that do? You've kept this secret for centuries. No man has ever seen us and lived. No man will until we are ready. Knowing what it would mean to you to find this out about us before you died, I thought I'd give you this pleasure. You see, we are quite human after all. Let me help you, Varga. I'm not ready for your kind of help. It's obvious to me what your plan is, to breed out the Yeti strain. But how can you do it without help? I being the fifth generation, you can see that it's not too difficult to obtain the necessary females. You kidnap women? There have been five this year. Now, of course, there's Connie. With her, I should be able to hedgehop two generations. Our offspring should be most interesting. Don't you think so, Doctor? Come, come, Doctor. A short while ago, you were recommending marriage for me. Have you changed your mind so quickly? I recommended marriage, not what you have in mind. I had great respect for you a short time ago, Varga because I thought you were a man apart. I was mistaken. You're a devil, Varga. A devil incarnate. Doctor, you disappoint me. I thought we could discuss this dispassionately, clinically. After all, it's your own field. Where man came from, where he's going. I'd hope to get some suggestions from you 
on how we could develop our intellectual side. You have nothing to offer? Too bad. We'll part sooner than I'd expected. You don't frighten me, Varga. My life has been full. Well said, Doctor. I do this with regret, for I've enjoyed your visit. We speak the same language in many respects. Bye, Doctor. Perhaps we'll meet again in some other incarnation. seriously hurt. He wants to see you right away. Where's Steve? We were caught in a slide. I saved the doctor, but I'm afraid No, that... no! Oh. Edward, you don't have to be afraid. I'm here to help you. Steve! Oh. Let's start down while we have the chance. Steve Barker killed Jim and Dr. Erickson. He told me when I wouldn't go with him. He gives commands to the Yeti. I saw it. I know it all figures. Come on, we can talk later.
It's all over, honey. Get a hold of yourself. Take me away from here, Steve. Take me away. 